Hi everyone, my name is MJ and in this video I'll show you all 54 Blender modifiers in just 10 minutes. You need to understand though that uh, these are not full tutorials because it would take a lot more than 11.1 seconds per modifier to explain all of them in detail. This is just a short video to show you the immense capabilities of Blender modifiers. So for those of you just starting out with Blender, what exactly are modifiers? Modifiers are automatic operations that affect an object's geometry in a non-destructive way. This means that you can perform many modeling operations automatically without changing the base geometry of your object. And one last thing before we start, if you find this video entertaining, a like and a sub would be highly appreciated. Let's begin with generate modifiers. The Array modifier creates an array of copies of the base object, with each copy being offset from the previous one in any of several possible ways. The Bevel modifier bevels the edge of the mesh it's applied to, with some control over how and where the bevel is applied to the mesh. The Boolean modifier combines two separate objects using one of three available Boolean operations, Union, Intersection and Difference. The build modifier causes the faces of the mesh object to appear or disappear one after the other over time. The decimate modifier allows you to reduce the number of faces of an object but keeping the same shape as much as possible. The edge split modifier duplicates some or all edges within a mesh, breaking links between faces around those split edges. When applied, you'll be able to separate the faces from each other. The Geometry Nodes modifier applies a node group which defines object's geometry. This is so-called procedural modeling. You use this geometry node tree to edit the mesh. Let's just say the possibilities are endless. The Mask modifier allows vertices of an object to be hidden dynamically based on vertex groups. The mirror modifier mirrors the mesh along its local x, y or z axes across the object origin. The subdivision surface modifier splits the faces of the mesh into smaller faces, enabling you to create complex smooth surfaces while modeling simple low vertex meshes. Higher level of subdivision here means smoother and more subdivided mesh. The multi-resolution modifier gives you the ability to subdivide a mesh similarly to the subdivision surface modifier, but also allows you to edit the new subdivision levels in sculpt mode. The remesh modifier is a tool for generating new mesh topology that contains only quads. You can choose the face size as well as four different remesh modes. The screw modifier takes a profile object, mesh or a curve to create a helix-like shape. Here we have a big list of options to control the shape, the angle degrees, number of offsets of a single revolution, number of revolutions and many more. The skin modifier uses vertices and edges to create quad tubes. In edit mode you control the thickness of every individual vertex with control A, which is the hotkey for the skin resize operation. It's mostly used in combination with the subdivision surface modifier to generate base mesh for sculpting. The solidify modifier takes the surface of any mesh and simply adds thickness to it. The triangulate modifier converts all faces in a mesh, so quads and n-gons, to triangular faces. The mesh to volume modifier allows you to create a mesh out of an existing volume object just by selecting it from a list or with the eye drop tool. The weld modifier looks for groups of vertices within a maximum distance between each other and merges them. Very useful when some vertices are so close together that they prevent other modifiers to work properly, like the bevel modifier in this case. The wireframe modifier transforms a mesh into a wireframe by turning edges into four sided tubes. Now let's continue with the form modifiers. The armature modifier is used for building skeletal systems for animating the poses of characters or anything else which needs to be posed. The cast modifier shifts the shape of a mesh object towards any of the few predefined shapes that can be spheres, cylinders or cuboids. Curve modifier provides a simple method of deforming a mesh along a curved object. The displace modifier moves vertices in a mesh based on the intensity of a texture. Select your texture and tweak settings to your likings. The hook modifier is used to deform a mesh using another object usually an empty. As the hook moves, it pulls vertices from the geometry with it. 
The Laplacian deform modifier allows you to deform a mesh with the use of a set of anchor vertices. When you move these hooks, the modifier keeps the rest of the anchor vertices in fixed positions and calculates the optimal locations of all the remaining vertices to preserve the original geometric detail. The lattice modifier deforms the base object, this one here, according to the shape of a lattice object. After you scale and reposition the lattice, change its resolution here and then add the lattice modifier. Now you can deform the lattice and the original mesh gets deformed too. The mesh deform modifier, just like the lattice modifier, deforms the base object but instead of a lattice it uses an arbitrary mesh to act as a deformation cage. The shrink wrap modifier allows an object to shrink or project to the surface of another target object. It moves each vertex to the closest position of the surface of the target object. Very useful for dressing characters or wrapping your model in foil. To avoid overlapping, you set the offset here. The simple deform modifier applies one of the four simple deformations to your object. These deformations are twist, bend, taper, and stretch. The smooth modifier smooths the mesh by flattening the angles between adjacent faces in it. Unlike subdivision surface modifier, it smooths the mesh without increasing the number of vertices. The smooth corrective modifier is used to reduce highly distorted areas of a mesh, like these overlapping faces in this case. Notice that it does nothing if there are no heavy deformations. The smooth Laplacian modifier is another smooth modifier that you control with a number of repeat operations and these lambda values that control the degree of the effect on faces and on holes separately. The surface deform modifier allows an arbitrary mesh surface to control the deformation of another mesh, essentially transferring its motion and deformation. The warp modifier deforms part of a mesh by using two empties. The object from point designates a point in space that is pulled towards the object to point. You can control the falloff type and the radius of the falloff. The wave modifier adds a ripple-like motion to an object geometry. You also get to control a bunch of options like type of motion, height, width, narrowness, start point and more. Next, we got physics modifiers. Most of these can be added through the physics properties panel, and that's where you find the options to manipulate them. The cloth modifier applied to a mesh simply creates a fabric or cloth simulation. The collision modifier provides interaction between different physics simulations. In this case, the cylinder has the collision modifier applied in order to correctly interact with the cloth. The dynamic pane modifier has two types, brush and canvas. The brush object alters the canvas object depending on what kind of canvas surface type you choose. Waves, for example, make waves on the canvas. The explode modifier is used to alter the mesh geometry by moving and rotating its faces, making it look as if the mesh is being exploded. The fluid modifier is a container for, you've guessed it, fluid physics simulation. The ocean modifier is a tool to simulate and generate a deforming ocean surface. You get a bunch of options here like the number of arrays on both axes, size, random seed, spectrum and more. Particle system modifier simply adds a particle system. You can have an emitter particle system for something like the explosion I showed you before or hair particle system for creating hair or fur. When a particle instance modifier is added to an object, the mesh of this object will be duplicated at the location of the particles of the selected particle system. Let's hide the icosphere to get a better look and scale the mesh in edit mode to see the particles changing as well. The soft body modifier is a container for a soft body physics simulation. With it, you create, well, soft jello objects. And last but not least, modify modifiers. The data transfer modifier transfers different types of data from one mesh to another. Most used are face normals. In this example, weird shading caused by messed up geometry gets corrected by transferring face normal data from a proper cylinder placed in the same location. The mesh cache modifier main use is for animation. After you create an animation, you can export it to an MDD or PC2 file and then later import it through the mesh cache modifier that gives you additional control over the animation like influence or time remapping. The mesh sequence cache modifier does the same thing as mesh cache modifier but with alembic files, which are computer graphic file formats developed by Sonic Pictures. 
The normal edit modifier affects face normals. It makes them all point in the direction of an object you choose as the target. Weighted normal modifier changes the default normals of a mesh. It's mostly used to make sharp corners geometry appear beveled and smoother without adding additional geometry. The UV warp modifier transforms an object's UV map based on values or another object and empty in this case. Its purpose is to give you direct control over the object's UV in the 3D viewport. The UV project modifier is very similar and allows you to control the UV map with an object, also an empty in this case, that acts like a slide projector. It emits a UV map and projects it to the object as the light hits it. Next three deal with vertex weights. The first one, vertex weight modifier, allows you to alter the vertex weight you've painted or the ones that you haven't painted with the use of these simple sliders. Vertex weight mix modifier mixes a second vertex group, or a simple value in this case, into the affected vertex group, using all these different operations you select from a list. Vertex weight proximity modifier allows you to control the vertex weights with the proximity of an object, in this case an empty, and also allows you to tweak other parameters directly from the modifier's properties panel. And that's it. That's all 54 Blender modifiers. I can go to sleep now. Thank you so much for watching and please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That will really help me a lot. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.